OK, can all you troublemakers hear me is the important thing, right. You know, when, when uh, Winston Churchill had to come fifth, I think, on a speaking uh, um, roster one day, and it ran late, somebody got up and said, no, Mr Churchill is now going to give his address. And he got up and said, to Eaton Square, and sat down. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to be a little longer than that, but I'm going to keep it brief, because I know you've got a walk to do. When I first came to live in this part of East Yorkshire, uh, when I got my constituency 27 years ago, I could have gone anywhere, to Sledmere in the north, beautiful Wolds area, down to West Woodside in the south, the Isle of Axholme. And I looked around, and I decided to live in what's now known as the Funa Valley. It was, as somebody's already said, it's a subtle beauty. Winding lanes, small villages, big trees, little ponds, copses, the horizon, a, the, the flowing curves of the Yorkshire Wolds. So you can imagine, and that's why I chose to live, you can imagine how I felt when in one of these wind farm inquiries that I was uh, making a habit of attending now, uh, the uh, official description of my part of the world was given. The opening words were, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but the opening words were, no visual merit. An area of square, or rectilinear fields, and no trees. Clearly written by somebody who never got closer to where I live than a Google map. And this is important because that's why we start off with the wind farms picking us, the wind farm companies picking us. They're going to look through the descriptions that the council planning departments create and look for ones they find, they'll find easy to take on. And then when the planning uh, application is made, the officers find it easy to recommend it. And then when the councillors turn it down and we go to appeal, we are of course undermined by our own council officers because they've already created this backdrop to us. So the first thing I'm going to say to you is on your list of things to achieve, somewhere low down, is changing the landscape assessment. That's vital. It's critically important you get that. The real problem in this county, more than anything else, is the planning department. Not the planning council, not the planning committee, it's the planning department. They have taken an attitude to this, which has made it too easy for the wind farm companies. Second thing I want to talk about is the policy briefly. And the raw truth is that since not long after 2000, governments of both persuasions, I suppose all three persuasions technically, have bent the rules or allowed the rules to be bent out of shape in favour of the wind farm industry and against local interest over and over again. Even up to the point of rigging one of the so-called independent reports on noise to allow the noise level to be double and therefore the wind farms to be much closer to your home. Now, that meant that up until last year, all those wind farm uh, appeals I went to were bluntly a futile battle because we lost five out of six of them. Five out of six. This year, that's changed. Eric Pickles has decided, uh, I, I assume unilaterally, because it won't have got Liberal Democrat support, but I assume, Liberal, uh, um, I assume unilaterally he's decided that he's going to give far more weight to the uh, appeal process, in the appeal process, to local interest, to local objections, to uh, localism generally. Since Christmas, that five out of six has dropped to a half. We've now got a decent chance when you go to appeal. Which brings me to my last political point before I talk about the generality. The councillors, broadly speaking, have been very good in East Yorkshire. They have turned down most of the, most of the uh, wind farms and then have gone on, of course, of course, to lose at appeal. The difficulty here is that a responsible councillor, if he lose and lose and lose again and then lose and lose and lose again, will start to say, are we spending our ratepayers' money wisely? And one of the most important things about this march is you have to bolster their resolution
to make sure they keep turning these things down because now we have the chance at appeal. And you have to remind them over and over again, you are not wasting our money, you are protecting our homes, you are protecting our county, you are protecting what is, after all, the heart of England. So that's one of the things you must make clear, not just today, but your councillors in future. Now, I have been careful historically about what I've said about the energy policy. You've heard today from uh, our engineer speaker uh, quite how poor the policy is. Half the country believes in global warming or man, man's effect on it, half don't. But whichever way you look at it, this policy does not work. I had the, one of the engineering advisors to one of the relevant departments come and see me about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And he's a very iconoclastic chap. And uh, I was picking holes in the wind farm policy. And he said, well, you know what the core problem is, David, don't you? I said, no. And he said, uh, when do we need most electricity? When's the highest domestic demand? And I said, well, I assume in the middle of winter when it's cold. Absolutely right. He said, well, when do you think that is? When do you think the coldest day is, roundabout? I said, oh, I don't know. End of January, 1st of February? He said, yeah. So what's it like? Describe it to me. I said, frosts, clear skies. He said, that's an anticyclone. He said, what's the characteristic of anticyclones? I said, ah, oh, no wind. Yeah, no wind. The coldest day and no wind. These wind farms are most useless when we need them most. And the result of that is, as you've heard, we have to have backup for them, backup power stations. And so we don't really save much energy at all. We certainly don't save any cost. We don't save much energy and much carbon at all. And one of the problems of it is, is this, and this came up only, uh, only a month or so ago, is because they have to be on standby, they have to be switched on at a moment's notice, switched off at a moment's notice, switched on again, switched off again. How, do you, how long do you think your television would last if you did that? On, off, on, off. Or your car, or any other piece of machinery. One of the consequences of this policy is that we are going to find that our major power stations have become more and more unreliable over the next decade. And so what we are lining up to is brownouts, is failure, is policy failure uh, on the provision of energy. So this is a very, very bad policy, a very, very unwise policy. And for that policy, my constituents' lives are being ruined. Really simply. That's no simpler way of putting it. Yes. Amen. Well, while somebody else was speaking, a young man went past here and shouted out NIMBY. Well, you know, if being a NIMBY is protecting people from having the beautiful countryside they moved into or chose to live in ruined, I'm a NIMBY. If having people's peace and quiet ruined, is NIMBY, I'm a NIMBY. If the, uh, the, uh, the having the environment that you live in destroyed is being a NIMBY, I'm a NIMBY. If having your house rendered unsaleable is being a NIMBY, I'm a NIMBY. Because at least one of my constituents is on antidepressants now because of the noise that she has to put up. Well, only when the wind's in one direction, but when the wind is in that direction, it's impossible to sleep impossible to sleep in your own home and others fear that and that's really really serious because this at the end of the day is about a human issue it's about the people who have to live under these wind farms and i say under advisedly 600 meters is under a wind farm so there is a real human environmental issue at the heart of this which does not favor wind farm it favors having people in control of their own lives and able to expect their lives not to be blighted by government policy. And you've heard, we already in East Yorkshire, we already in East Yorkshire have a vast number of wind farms, the second highest in the country, only behind Northumbria, and Northumbria is many times the size that we are. So frankly, we paid the price, we paid our dues, it's time for this policy to come to an end. Enough is enough. No more wind farms in East Yorkshire. Thank you.